Hi there, welcome back to the pre-polishing of the pavilion. Okay, so I've got my pre-polished lap on here. It is a copper lap and I'm using 1800 to pre-polish. And I use pre-polish for cutting a lot of my facets. I mean, apart from the main facets, I use pre-polish for cutting all of the breaks and once we get to the crown, I use it for the stars and the breaks. Unless you're doing a really big stone to save time, you don't really need to cut the smaller facets in on a sintered grinding wheel. Okay, so we're just going to start up the copper lap. And I'm going to use a little bit of oil just to clean it off. WD-40, I'm just going to wipe it off, make sure it's all clean. I'm going to use some of my 1800 mixed with a bit of WD-40 and put it on the lap. Now, when I'm wiping it off, I'm not really wiping it all off. I'm actually pressing it into the lap. Okay. I'm just lightly getting rid of the excess as well because you don't want oil and diamonds spluttering around everywhere. I'm getting a clean tissue and I'm going to spray it with a little bit of metho so that after each cut I can wipe it off and have a look about where I'm going. Okay, so I'm going to start back on 64. Double check that I've got my angle right, nothing's changed. I'll need to raise the height because my lap, my pre-polished lap is a, is, is a lot thicker than my grinding lap. Okay, now I'm just gonna lower it onto the lap and raise it up above the lap and lower it till it's almost just touching and then I'm gonna raise it back up. Double check. Cut the first, check the first main on pre-polish and see, make sure that it's pre-polishing nicely. So I've got one nicely pre-polished main there. So make sure it just lower it until it's touching. Next one, and I'm just going to go around quickly and pre polish each of the eight main facets that I've already cut using all of my lap backwards and forwards. You could also pre-polish the girdle first before you did this. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm just looking, I'm just looking and making sure all my facets are the same size. They're all, oops, there's a little tiny little chip there. Okay, now we have to sort that out. This is what happens. So. Right at the culette there, there is a tiny, tiny little crack. I don't know if you can see that. It's right at the point. Now I'm not going to leave that in there. So what I will need to do is cut all of these facets down a little bit further until I get rid of it. I'm going to put this on pause and come back. I have the pavilion 
nicely faceted until I come up into a nice point. And they all look the same size. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm just going to pre-polish the girdle. Back to 90 or 89 or wherever it ended up. Now I don't need to facet the whole of the material left of the crown. Sorry, not facet, pre-polish. Just the bit that's going to end up as the girdle. So I'm just running that around on pre-polish now and looking at where it's hitting and I can see that I'm getting a nice pre-polish for a good couple of mils of girdle. Listening again. To where it's hitting. This does tend to wear out a little bit of the pre-polish on the lap, so it's worthwhile just putting a touch more on there. Putting gentle pressure, it shouldn't really sound that sharp. Just wiping it off and having a look what's going on. All oh, looks like it's getting nicely pre polished for the whole circumference. Okay. Now I can pre-polish in and this one's going to have a little bit of a shallow crown which is fine for a dark blue. I'll have to drop the crown down a couple of degrees but that's okay. So I've put the mains in at about 40 so I can put the brakes in or the, the brake facets or the girdle facets depending on what you want to call them. I can put them in at about 41 and a half to 42. I'm going to put them in at 41 and a half because that makes them nice and long. Oh, I'll see how that goes anyway. And now we're going to the indices in between the mains. Okay, so if, if you're a new coat, you can go around and mark them. I don't need to do this for a round brilliant, but I do do it for more complicated designs to let me know where each tier of facets is. Okay. So I'm going to start by putting in the first two, which would be either side of 64 or 96, depending on what sort of um, index wheel you're cutting on. And you're looking at where those facets are going. So I want them to reach an equal height up the mains at the same time that they meet in the middle. So this is what is called meet point faceting. And I'll go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards from one to the other. until they just meet at the bottom of the main facet. And you want to try to make sure that everything on pre-polish you know, is, is to your standard, as perfect as you want to make it. Because while you can move facets with polish, it, it's not what you want to be doing. Now, I have two nice pre-polished facets there, so I'm going to go around to the next set. 
and I'm going to make sure that this this facet now reaches up to the same height as the previous one and I'm going to go around the whole stone and do that and make sure each set of break facets is nice and even okay I'll just put it on pause while I do that so now I have a nicely pre-polished pavilion everything nicely shiny the facets and where they start and end their meet points are to my liking we have enough pre-polished crown or girdle for the crown maybe not quite a third on this one but that's okay it's going to have a shallow crown so now the next step is polishing So I'm going to put on my type metal disc. And I'm just going to give it a little clean off because it's been a few days since I've used it. no dust or bits of dirt on there okay I actually think that I mixed up my polish with my pre-polish during the last couple of videos so I'm going to start afresh with my polish because I don't want to contaminate my polish lab of course now I'm using 50,000 you can use a hundred thousand if you like. If you use a hundred thousand polish, you might want to try a thirty-six hundred pre-polish. Otherwise, it's too big of a jump from eighteen hundred to a hundred thousand. I have tried a hundred thousand in the past, and I really couldn't see any difference. I'm sure under a microscope you could see a difference, but I'm quite happy with the polish that fifty thousand gives. Okay. So, get a little jar, this is quite a big jar, but if you've got a small one, that's great. And you just put in some of your polish. I'll probably put in, I don't know, a carrot or something like that. You don't want to put in your, your, all your polish, just in case it gets contaminated and you've got to throw it out. Right, polish on the right, pre-polish on the left, got it. I've only done it that way for 20 years. Okay, now you can either use a bit of Singer sewing machine oil. Well, that's quite a bit. You only need a couple of drops. Or you can use some WD-40. I mean, depending on what you're cutting, try different things. You'll find the, the right combination that works for whatever you're doing. And I'm getting a new paintbrush because... The other ones that are in all my jars, I'm not sure what they've got on them, whether it's pre-polish or polish. So we're just going to mix that around a little bit. It's a fairly thick, I wouldn't even call it a slurry, it's more like a paste. Okay, and you can, depending on what, you, what you're cutting, you might want more or less medium, like your oil, and more or less polish. But I know for sapphires that this is going to work. Okay. So, I'm going to start up my polish lab, put a little bit of polish on it, and then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a clean tissue. Okay. I then get another tissue, and I'm going to just put a little bit of metho on it. 
because that's going to make it easier to see where my polish is hitting my pre-polished facets. You want to make sure your stone is completely clean. Douse it down with some metho. Clean your quill. You don't want a single speck of pre-polish getting on that stone or that lap. I'm going to start with the girdle. Because I find that if you start with the facets and then polish the girdle, you can get tiny, tiny, tiny little chips around the girdle. So I like doing the girdle first. I'm going to lower it onto the lap until it's just missing. Roll it around, lower it down, see where my polish is hitting. You don't have to polish the whole of the girdle at this stage. You just want to make sure that you polish it where the girdle is going to be at the in the in the finished gem. Okay, which is what this one is doing. It's only really hitting right where the girdle is going to be. And I'm just moving it around a little bit because I don't want to carve a groove into my polish lap. Once again, I'm getting a tissue, a little bit of metho. And having a look and making sure that I'm happy with the girdle being polished. Now it's worth mentioning that when I was taught, I was only taught to pre-polish a girdle. And I think that there are some benefits in that, maybe from a jeweler's perspective, perspective because it's not so smooth maybe the claws can get a better hold I'm not sure but in this day and age of trying to sell gems online and having to blow them up to you know a hundred times of the size they are so people can get a really good look at the faceting a, a an unpolished girdle really stands out so for the last few years I have been polishing my girdles it just looks nicer, it looks more finished. Now I'm going back to my break angle, right, which was around 41.5. And I'm just gonna start touching it down on the polish lap and making sure that everything is okay. Down onto the lap. looks pretty good. It looks like it's hitting the facet, the pre-polished break facet, all over. A lot of people have trouble with polish and I use this little torch just to check my polish. Okay, now actually the polish is hitting the bottom of the facet, so what I need to do is just raise it up a tiny bit and you really should do this with the lap stationary. I've just had enough practice that I can judge it. But yeah, I should have shown that. So what you should do, now we're gonna start on a different facet now because we've already partly polished that one. And if you do have a bit of a polish on a facet and there's something not quite right, go to the next facet. So you're not getting confused about where the polish is going on one facet. And we touch it down onto the lap and we look at where the oil is covering the facet. And for this one, it's covering on the bottom. So I need to raise it up a little bit and then, well, and or, or both, touch it down onto the lap again until I can see that oil. And if you put your finger behind your, your gem, if you put your finger behind your stone, it's often easier to see where the light is hitting it and judge what you are doing. And I'm going to wait till I get that oil. You can move the lap. That oil is covering the whole facet. So I know that the polish is exactly where the pre-polish was. Now if your laps are getting a little bit worn, might need refacing or something is moving on your machine, this can be virtually impossible. So you want to make sure that your machine is in good condition, everything is precision, nothing is moving, and you also want to make sure that your laps are completely flat. 
and if they're not, I mean, every now and then you need to get them machined and make sure they are completely flat. And we're just going to go and polish the brakes. And I'll use a little torch. Just, and I'll make adjustments until I'm happy with where that polish is going, which is, I'm pretty happy with that. The next one and make sure it's okay and then once you've got it right if everything's working correctly you can just go around your gem now and pre-polish all of your brakes you can look at each one individually or if you are once you get a bit more confident and you know everything's working right you can just go around quite quickly And you can do all your polishes on this size gem in a few seconds. Each facet can be done in a few seconds. Make sure you try to use all of your, the diameter of your lap to keep it evenly worn. Okay, I'll go and finish the polish here and I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay. Now I just want to show something that I'm doing if I find that I'm not getting the correct polish quick enough and it depends on the stone you're cutting I mainly cut sapphires then it, it, it can pay to play around with your polish consistency so try a little bit less polish try wiping all the polish off your lap and just starting with a little bit or try some more so and try wet and dry I prefer a fairly dry lap okay there's not a lot of oil there but if I do find that I'm getting some polishing happening a little bit slowly what I will do is I don't I don't mind putting just a bit of dry powder 50,000 now you can try to put it on the outer edge or the inner edge so in this case make sure you do it with a clean finger is I'm just going to rub it in around the inner part of the lap, okay? Now I find that if you're getting some little scratches on your polish, that doing something like this can help. So I've got more of a wet mix on the outer area of the lap. I've got some fairly dry, and I'm going to wipe it off again to make sure there's no excess. And just by playing around with different sorts of polishes, you should be able to find one that just works perfectly for the stone that you're cutting. So I'm finding with this that the polish is just working a little bit too slow for me. So I'm going to cut it on that, well, polish it on the outer and then finish up on the inner because I'll find that that usually finishes up the polish really nicely. And there we go very happy with that so where I can get some sort of quick polishing on the outer part of the lap and then finish off on the slower drier part of the lap and that tends to work for me for sapphires and mm, usually quartz too so we can get some good polishing done on the outer lap and then finish it off on the inner lap. And of course you can buy different laps. You can buy laps that have pre-polish and then polish. And I want to try some of these different laps out in the future. But this lap has the, the good old solid tight metal lap with dry polish and some sort of medium has worked for me for many, many years. So I'm happy with it for now. Okay, I'll get back to you when I'm finished polishing this gem. Okay, so now I have all the brake facets polished and I'm very happy with the way this gem is coming along. I'm going to go and polish the mains. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of the pavilion of this sapphire. 
I'm just finishing polishing the mains. And making sure everything's perfect. So, if you notice that something is a tiny, tiny little bit out of whack on polish, you can always fix it up. You can use your cheater, your height adjustment, and make sure that all, I mean, ideally you don't want to, but you can, you can, you can do that. To adjust something to make sure that everything meets. You don't have to go and recut the whole stone if you've made a tiny little mistake and you just need to adjust it a tiny bit on polish to make sure that there's not an overcut or an undercut to make sure all your facets meet like you want them to. Now during the polishing of a pavilion I may I may add polish several times Maybe two, three, four times. Okay, so we're constantly refreshing the lap and making sure that there is a nice even coating of polish or you, your dry and wet polish, however you want it to be. But we don't want it to get it worn out and make the polishing of a facet take minutes where it should take seconds. And if you're not polishing a facet on a one carat stone within a few seconds, then, then there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the way you're polishing or more likely with the amount of polish you, you're, you're using or the type of lap that you're using to polish with. I use quite a bit of pressure when polishing and when cutting in general. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just want to make sure that you don't heat up the wax too much so that your stone moves. Because you will find that well, the bigger the stone, the bigger the facet, that the stone will heat up quite a lot and get quite warm while you are polishing it. Now I'm just checking, making sure that I am happy with all my facets. check them with torch. I like to do that. Okay. And the next step will be transferring. Okay, get back to you in a minute. Thank you. Now, just before I transfer, I'm just going to show you a little trick that I learned is that before you transfer, and if your transfer block or your machine itself does not have lock, like pin locking devices, then what we can do is while we're on, while we have the stone docked and mine's at 64, 64 is a main facet, I can just lower that or raise that, sorry, a little bit, above where I've done the girdle, okay? So that's as far as my machine will go, which is about, Mm, 93. I can just do that. I can touch it on the lap and just cut a little facet that will tell me where my 64 is, like where my zero is. Okay, so it's not going to get far. As long as it is lower than the girdle, it'll be fine. Mine's going to be about 91. Okay. And so there, if you just touch it on the lap, you have a little reference, a little reference for where you're going to put the mane on the crown if you're going to do stack mains. Now, mine didn't work very well because I don't normally do this. I normally just line it up by eye, but I just thought I'd show you that. Okay. Okay, so there's a lesson in itself. Don't do that because what I've ended up with is a, unless your machine can do that angle change, 
I've ended up with a little bit of my girdle taken away. And if you put a grinding lathe onto a surface that's polished, you're going to end up with chips at the very best scenario. Sometimes it can take huge chunks away. If you put a grinding lap onto polish, if you ever need to go back a step, always go back through pre-polish to fine grind and then coarse grind. So what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to fix that up on pre-polish and polish and the couple of facets above it. Okay, I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay. So now we have that all fixed up and I should have known better and I guess if your machine doesn't have that much angle difference then you should try to just touch it in on maybe pre-polish although the normal way I do it is just to line it up by eye once it's transferred and I'll show you how to do that okay we've got our transfer block here got our stone with a pavilion cut and we're going to put it in one end of the transfer block tighten that up nice and solid I have my transferring dop here now some of your transfer blocks and some of your dops will have little keys that make sure it's all lined up exactly you know 64 to 64 but oh, I've never used that Okay, so I prefer to line it up by eye. So normally, I would, well, let's just put that at a rough horizontal so that we've got some kind of idea that we're straight. Okay. All right, so I'll do that. And I'm going to transfer it to a 6mm transfer dock because that is plenty big enough but not too big it not too big let's move that a bit okay. now i do wax to wax transfer of course you can do glue transfer oh, some people use super glue i'm not sure i've never tried super glue i do have a two-part epoxy that i can use for heat sensitive stones but i'm just going to do a wax to wax transfer okay so once again we just heat the wax until it starts melting pick up some in the dop I use cone dops for dopping and transferring and you don't need a lot if you're using a dop for transferring you, because the stone's going to push into it you don't need excess dopping wax I'm just going to heat that up a bit till it goes just sort of nice and evenly across the top and that's heaps I'm going to put it in there. We're going to heat up everything at once. So we're going to heat, I just like waving the lighter through it to get rid of the condensation on the stone. Okay, then we're, we're trying not to heat up this side too much. So we're heating up this side and the wax and the dob. And getting it nice and hot until the wax is and you've got to do this fairly quickly because you, you don't really want to heat up the other side too much it doesn't matter so much with a culet cut or with a round brilliant but if you're trying a like a free form or something then that the stone could actually slide so I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit I'm going to keep heating And once again, you'll be able to see when the wax kind of starts melding to the stone, melting into the stone. Push it, make sure it's right up there hard. The dop is pressed up right into the culette of the other stone, of the stone. And right there we have it, where that wax is starting to really smooth out. Make sure it's all locked in tight and leave it set for a minute okay and that's transferring to get the other 
end off we'll just heat up this side and it'll break off i'll get back to you in another video okay thanks for watching bye